the desert. Tell me about a desert. It's dry, so there's not a lot of water. Very good. Okay. The spines of the cactus are go. an adaptation that helps shade the cactus from the sun and prevent the loss of water from its surface. They also protect the cactus from hungry animals. This trait is passed down from one generation to the next. Okay, so even plants can inherit traits from their parents. What did the cactus inherit from its parents? The what? The thorns, the spines, yes. What else? Okay, the color, I'll go with that, absolutely. Good, and it protects it from who? From the predators. Predators, very good. The hungry animals that are coming to get it, because then they might be poked by the spine, right? It'll hurt. Have anybody been, the spine, yes? Has anybody ever been poked by a thorn or a spine? Rose bushes have thorns, yes? Does it feel good? No, it doesn't feel very good, that's right. All right. Musk oxen are well adapted to live in the Arctic region. They have two layers of fur that protect them from the extreme cold climate. Musk oxen, where do they live? In the cold, cold. In the Arctic region, and what about the Arctic region do you notice? It's cold. It's cold. So what do they have to protect them? Two layers of fur. Two layers of fur, did they learn that? They what? They inherited. they inherited it. From who? From their parents. From their parents. The plant parents or the musk oxen parents? The musk oxen parents. There you go. Good job. Okay. A musk ox large hard hooves break icy surfaces of water bodies to drink the water below. Their hooves are another example of adaptation. Okay, so they got their hooves because in the Arctic region it's so cold and the water freezes because it's so cold under all of that snow and ice. And so in order for the oxen to get to the water, because they have to have water to survive, right? And survive means what? Maybe. To live. You have to have water to survive, to live. So they have those large hard hooves that are breaking that ice and getting down there so they can get to the water. Look at this ptarmigan bird in summer and in winter. What happened? It changed colors. Changed camouflage. Camouflage. Ooh, what's the word? Camouflage. Camouflage, very good, it changed color. So in the summer, did you notice what color it was in the summer? Brown. It was like brown, very good. What color was it in the winter? White. White. Why? It camouflaged itself. Yes, so, so it's not prey, right? It's camouflaging itself for its prey. Not, so it's not prey, so it comes predator. predator. So the predator doesn't get it. So for its protection, why, why would the bird turn white in the winter? Because of the snow. Because of the snow? <coughs> yes, because what color is the snow? White. white. White, very good. Very good, guys. Inherited or learned? Inherited. inherited. Say the word inherited. Inherited. There you go. Yes, it's the same bird. The ptarmigan lives in the cold Arctic and has adapted by changing the color of its feathers from brown to white based on the season. Pretty cool, huh? Yes. Changing the color of its feathers from brown to white helps the bird blend into its surroundings and keeps it hidden from other animals. The no, did I fast forward? The spots on a leopard, the stripes on a zebra, the smelly spray of a skunk, and the long neck of a giraffe are all inherited traits. Inherited traits. Why would the skunk need to be smelly? So the predator doesn't need to Yeah, very good. Excellent. Why does the giraffe need a long neck? So, so he can eat from the leaves. So he can eat from the leaves. Very good. Yes. 